Trauma. I think like if you're interested in sport in a, in a sort of an enduring way, you're going to deal with trauma at some point. Michael Verney, we have definitely dealt with it as supporters, even as journalists at times, I'm sure we've even felt for the opposition team or as, an, as, as someone who starts out a game as a neutral. What comes to mind when you think of sport and trauma? There must be just something that kind of grabs you straight away. Yeah, I suppose sport is all about highs and lows and the highs are unbelievable, but the lows tend to stick with you a bit more. I think one that, that will always live with me. Do you know what some things you can always, you can remember even where you were, even if you weren't there, you can remember what was going on. Uh, the, the 1998 replay, Offaly and Clare, when Jimmy Cooney blew up early, I'll never forget it because I was actually doing page boy uh, for my godmother at her wedding. And I'll never forget, like, we were all obviously great Offaly supporters, my father, all my uncles and that. And, like, don't get me wrong, we're all, you know, a family, real close, knit family, but, like, lads wanted to be at the, lads wanted to be at the match. And to not, like, the, the timing of the wedding, obviously, coinciding with similar time to the match. So the wedding was not long over, and we bet into the hotel, watched the match. And i just never forget, there was 68 minutes gone, and Jimmy Cooney blew up the whistle, and... Like, just, like, total panic, total confusion. No one knew what was going on. My father was going mad. The, the, it was in Mort, in the Grand Hotel in Mort. He said, there'll have to be a replay. There'll have to be. That's all you could hear. And it was just, like, it it, it, it was a cloud that carried over the, the whole day and obviously led to the to the sit-down protests. And there were just even some iconic images after of, Mike, of Michael Bond going up and showing Jimmy Cooney to watch. And even the camera panning to Gerald Nan, and he was just kind of like that, totally confused or whatever. And it was just, for awfully supporters, it was unbelievably traumatic. I suppose they got rid of some of the trauma by sitting down on the pitch and chatting through it all and, I suppose, demanding a replay. And But just for that day and the confusion around it and not knowing what was going on, I'd say there was some amount of uh, some amount of sleepless nights and awfully that night. Was it the full conversation for the rest of the night of that wedding? Are pretty much, yeah. Sure. Like, just like staunch awfully, man. Like, my uncles would all be from Ferban. Uh, my father, obviously, be from Burr. And everyone was just like, everyone was used to going to Crow Park or going to Dublin, following awfully team football and hurling at that kind of glory period. And it just like, it was all kind of taken away from us, too. And having been beaten by Clare in 95, everyone just wanted to get one over on Clare. And to have it kind of seemingly taken away from you like that, it just like, a wedding, the happiest occasion of two people and many people surrounding them, and it was just surrounded by trauma for the rest of the night. Yeah, I had a few of those with Claire during the nineties. Also, Johnny Lahey missing that goal chance in the All Ireland. I thought, ah, okay, and like because that team, you you were all rooting for Claire. We know when they first came through. It's it's much like someone comes out of out of nowhere, and wins something. Everyone's rooting for them, and then pretty quickly, yeah, the knives are out, and we're all going to turn on this team. We're sick of them winning, especially if you're the team losing to them. And Claire, Claire beat all the top teams, all the traditional teams in 1997. So I was purely sick of them at that stage. So it was traumatic enough losing to them. I think the, the Hawkeye final in 2014, because, you know, I'm, I'm in the press box as a journalist, but I mean, I've, I've no problem saying it, that I was fully cheering and roaring tip on. And when that went over, I saw all the crowd behind the goals, uh, just with their arms up in the air as if it had gone over and a cheer was going up. So I was there giving it the big one. And then it went to Hawkeye. Like that whole thing was traumatic. And then you're kind of just left in a state of, well, what do we do now? And you know, like a replay happens and there's sort of like a hollow there. So that was kind of traumatic. Another one that comes to mind, also Croke Park, Damien Fitzhenry's penalty, or was it a 21 yard free? Yeah, that was moved into the center. Lovely little spot for him to take it. Blasted in against Tipperary. Knocks Tip out of the All-Ireland quarterfinal in 2007 and ends Bab's tenure. So those will be a couple that come to mind for me. But uh, you threw it out on Twitter there and you had a few comments in. Is there any in particular that sort of caught your eye? Yeah, there's a lot of lot of good comments, to be honest with you. Um, uh, Joe on Twitter here, uh, a Carlo man, he's sickening me here. He says, Carlo, 11 points down at half time, down to 14 men. You know the rest. Uh, Carlo came back and relegated awfully to Division 2A last year, and, and Joe is taking, um, <laughs> Joe is taking great satisfaction from it. Kieran Dunphy from Kilkenny just said, Anytime I looked at the program and saw Barry Kelly's name, 
<laughs> which um, is implying that Barry Kelly, when he was refereeing matches, brought brought some trauma to uh, to Kilkenny people. Um, there's a couple of other yeah, Yellow Belly is on here saying the '93 uh, Leinster final drawn, the '93 League finals against Cork. Yeah, they were epic games for Wexford people. '98 Leinster semi final versus Offaly, Dooley goal in the last minute. This is one now that must have been an unbelievable sickener. Uh, Wexford were up 17-15 game has gone into injury time they were the better team on the day I think I think Brian Whelan it was threw in a free and around the edge of the square so many bodies there somehow Johnny Dooley pulls on I'm actually getting goose pimples talking about it here and he pulls on it to the net an absolute robbery an absolute robbery and that was probably the end of that Wexford team and obviously end up winning on All-Ireland out of it it's, it's mad to even think about it um, there's a couple of other good ones here as well uh, Mike Flynn uh Poor on Mike, he's, he's still thinking about it. You're from Offaly, I'm from Limerick, you can figure out the rest yourself. Like, that was, like, the five-minute final in 94, while it was unbelievable for us, I cannot imagine what it was like for Limerick people. They were 2-13 to 11 up, five minutes to play, and then Offaly score, what was it, 3-5 without reply in the last few minutes. Billy Dooley puts over three, like, to literally break hearts like thank, at least Limerick people got their moment in 18 because that would have taken so long to recover from that's definitely one that would stick out for a lot of people I'd say I presume you were too young to be able to appreciate what was going on when Antrim beat Offaly and won well for a finish scoring four goals that day if I remember correctly yeah I was only I was only three at the time so no I, I, have, no, I have no recollection of that you weren't even old enough uh, to be a page boy at that stage <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I remember Dahi Regan saying after it all, um, everybody was saying about how lovely a gesture it was for Offaly to to lead Antrim off the pitch and give them a guard of honour. And he just said, he said that that just happened totally organically. He said we were that shocked about what was after happening. We were just kind of all standing there. We didn't know what to do or anything like that. And it kind of made it look like he actually said it made it look like they were, you know, doing this unbelievable like sport and gesture. And he just said we were that shocked. We just we didn't know, we didn't know what to do. We didn't know where to go. And ended up kind of giving them a guard of honour. There's a couple of other good comments as well. Uh, Niall Brambrick he says as a Kilkenny man, it has to be the 2004 Leinster final at Mick Jacobs' last gasp goal. Like ah, like like that couldn't be like, more exactly what we're trying to talk about. It's just that shell shock, and that even caused Brian Cody to jump down onto the ground. Basically, beside yeah, the goals, yeah. if you look back the footage, you'll see him jumping on the ground. Yeah, yeah, that was mad. Like, uh, like you'd never see that now. You wouldn't even see Cody there, obviously. Like for for it to be that traumatic that he would, would fall. Like Brian Cody, the man of stone, the man who showed rarely shows you know emotion, dropping to the ground. Like it was just like he was after being shot. It was absolutely mad. Uh, another one that stands out for me, and this is definitely for for all the wrong reasons and not for sporting reasons was the 2019 Leinster court final against um, St Mullins of Carlow with Kula at the end of the game the fact that one of the selector for for St Mullins was just basically getting emergency treatment um, after having a heart attack his son Oshin had come on and then went off and he saw the commotion on the sideline and the fact that like I mean we got knocked out but that doesn't really matter so much obviously but the St Mullins players were there when they should have been celebrating what was a huge win in the Leinster Championship. And they're there with their heads on their hands looking over at this situation. Now, thankfully, he was OK afterwards. But that was like that was traumatic, but just in a very, very different sort of way. And th these kind of things happen now and again. Like you have huge crowds at games. Emotions are running high. People are going to get ill now and again. I even think, uh, was it back in Galway uh, in the 1960s in the football All-Ireland? One of the players, I think, uh, possibly his father had a heart attack and died. Possibly uh, Donnellan's father and Michael Donnellan's uh, grandfather. I, I might double check that as, as you're talking there. But uh, there's probably a few more like that out there. But God, they're not exactly the most pleasant things to talk about. No, and two that would be personal enough to myself um, that I remember when Parry Corn captained Offaly to win their, their first Leinster title um, in 1980. Uh, his, fa his father died actually the same day and I think he only found out about it after, after the match to the best of my knowledge and then when Burr played Clare Castle in uh, 98 down in Turles it was an epic two epic games uh, Joe Errity you know an unbelievable servant for Offaly and Burr his father Tommy died uh, I think it was during extra time of the second game and uh, it was just unbelievably sad it was yeah just like a, a moment of absolute you know euphoria after winning a match 
and then you hear something like that's after happening. Um, yeah, that was that was that was as traumatic as it gets now, to be honest with you. Some of the other stuff that we're talking about seems kind of very trivial in the sense of of trauma when you when you talk about things like that. Yeah, without doubt. Um, another one that came up was the 2008 Monster Under 21 final. So Tipperary beat Clare that day, and what had happened is a puck out came. Uh, Clare won a free. It was a handy free to knock it over just to, well, a 65, and Colin Ryan doesn't really miss them. <clears throat> but then the, the umpire said that the goalkeeper had come outside the six-yard box. Tipperary ended up getting a handy free, knocked it over, won the Monster final, and was there was pandemonium basically afterwards. And I did a piece with uh, Colin Ryan, and he was talking about it, but also within that piece I spoke to Brendan Maher, and he's, he kind of re- recalled the mood, and he says, we were out in the middle of the field and we didn't really realise what was going on until we went up to get the cup. There was a bit of pushing and shoving and jeering. I remember standing standing up when Seamus Hennessy was going up to get the cup, seeing there were a few coins and even a bit of a hurley coming up at one stage. It was fairly tense. It wasn't something you'd ever like to see a repeat of. It was a weird way to finish and um, win a monster final. But a win is a win, as they say. But in fairness to the Tip fans, they stayed around and cheered us when we were coming down. There was also a few Clare fans waiting outside the dressing rooms that clapped us on too. So it wasn't all the Clare fans that were hostile. But I'd say, like, for the Clare fans looking back, I mean, if they didn't have the success at that grade uh, afterwards, they'd probably be very, very upset over it. And probably still are anyway, because that was that was a tough way to lose it, just the guy stepping outside the six-yard box taking a puck out. Yeah, I don't think anybody has any issue. Like, everybody loses and you have to go through that. But when you feel like there's a sense of injustice almost, it's very, very hard to deal with. Like, remember last year's All-Ireland semi-final. Imagine Tipperary had been beaten in last year's All-Ireland semi-final. There would have been war with the disallowed goals and the the point the points that were or weren't the ones that went over the bar and that Brian Hogan plucked back. Like, there would have been absolute consternation if... Um, if Wexford had won that game, in in many senses, and that's kind of injustice t- tends to happen in the GA several different moments of it. Um, there's just a couple of other interesting comments in Joe Regan on Twitter, 2015, Cottle Barrett slipping as the ball was fed into Shane Maloney of Galway. I knew the outcome about three seconds before it happened. That was a long, slow, torturous three seconds. I was in the lower Cusick at that end of the pitch with a great few. Yeah, like something as as simple as that. When you when you know when you get, I've often seen that matches. It's like you know what's coming. You're you're five seconds ahead of the play almost. You can see what's going to happen before it happens. Um, there's another one here, Barry Dunn. He said, not a club member, but Claren Bridge scoring a late goal to deny Dennis Allen extra time of the 2011 All Ireland Club semi final, and then comfortably winning the All Ireland against O'Loughlin has to be right up there, heartbreaking to watch. Claren Bridge and Dennis Allen was one of the great club games. And De La Salle did look like they were going to win. It looked like they were going to win it twice and then had it, had it taken away from them. Um, Eamon Gerrity is an interesting one as well. I must check this out after. The goal that never was, for me, goal would be awfully 1985. Joe Cooney effort from way out seemed to hit a hurl in the awfully net. I'd heard this before and popped out. Goal not given. Would love to see footage, but can't find it. Um, yeah, very uh, stuff like that. Like like Parik Horn scored a goal against Leash in uh, it was an eighty one that went through the side netting and Offaly ended up winning the All Ireland after. I saw someone commenting on it recently enough. Offaly were a much better team the same day and hit twenty three scores to sixteen, I think, and twenty wides. But something like that can happen. I think Matt Root got a goal against Offaly one day that the ball was wide, but he managed to pull it back into play. And like, like my father still talk about that 30 years later, that those type of things. People don't forget those things. When you're from that county and you're in that sort of, that kind of uh, tribalism is ingrained in you, you don't forget, like you take that stuff to the grave. Like the Clare boys in 08 and the 21 will take that to the grave with them regardless of what they've won. Yeah, and that's just the way of it. I'm sure there are plenty more we haven't even touched on and people will let us know. I mean, if there's enough, we might do a second video on it. Uh, so don't don't forget to reply and let us know. And uh, yeah, that's our traumatic moments anyway. Actually, just before we finish, are there any that you've had on the field yourself? Um, traumatic. Ah, yeah, it's a, it's a recent one. And the recent ones tend to stick in the craw even more. Actually, we were seven points up in last year's county final and ended up ended up getting beaten by one. We were seven points up with about 15 minutes to go and ended up getting beaten by one. And I came on for the last 10 or 15 minutes and... You could, the game was just going away from us in normal time 
and we just couldn't get that score that we needed. And yeah, that that's probably that's probably the worst. It's it's the worst defeat in my career, I'd say, because we should have. We were in a position to win the game. And uh, yeah, you won't be, uh, you won't quickly forget that now. Mm. Bob with yourself. Um, yeah, th- losing the county final to Kilmacud Croaks in 2012, like I'd been out injured for something like five or six weeks and I kind of tried to rush back, wasn't in good shape at that stage when I came back because I couldn't do any training whatsoever and came on. But the game was already slipping away. Now, I, I, I was poor when I came on, but it was already slipping away. Other than that, it's generally kind of injuries more so because. Luckily enough, other than that game against St. Mullins and, and a couple of other losses here and there, we tended to do all right in the finals. But yeah, I think it's more so injuries than anything that that, that just tend to be kind of traumatic and even seeing them and lads getting stretched off, that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I think definitely the things we're talking about are those sort of like that you have a game stolen away from you late on or just a moment that makes you go just and you know you're still thinking about 20 or 30 years later so if there are any more please people let us know and uh and we might talk about just on, just, just on that i've had plenty of like trauma with injuries and stuff like that but there's something very very traumatic and strange about being injured and being on the line for a big game and not being able to have any effect on it it's um ah uh, it's it's torturous really you you would you every everything you're thinking Jeez, would I even able to do something there? Would I could I have added something here or something like that? And that's nearly the worst type of trauma. Funnily enough, I have I don't I haven't got it in a couple of years, but I used to have this recurring dream, and it would definitely be traumatic. It was where the referee was ready to throw in the ball and our whole team was lined out without me, and I was in the dressing room trying to like get my gear on and tie my boots and tie my laces, but I just I just couldn't get there. And it was the most traumatic thing of all time because just like the game is starting and like where's where's your man? Where's Bernie supposed to be or whatever? And I just couldn't get onto the pitch. It, I don't know. I'm sure it's probably a sign of something or I don't know what or maybe it's just a sign that I'm an idiot. But uh, it uh, that sort of thing is just sort. Of, I often woke up in a sweat like thinking, "Geez, the match is on." And I cannot. I literally cannot get my boots on. I cannot get onto the pitch. <laughs> I think some psychologist is going to make serious money out of you eventually because you are a stone eh? but of course there is no cure for that so what are you going to do <laughs> right thanks very much good man